The news really shape our views on policing. In the early 1900s, for example, Hollywood painted cops as silly, incompetent in comedy skits like the Keystone Cops. It was then that the International Association of Chiefs of Police called Hollywood out for that behavior. And soon, cops became advisors to Hollywood producers, helping them shape stories about police, usually putting themselves in a positive light. That was a clip from a new project focused on how police officers are shielded from accountability. As that video details, Americans have been exposed for decades to what they call copaganda, starting with the 1950s show Dragnet, where the LAPD had a say in the scripts to the endless number of police and law and order shows that we have today. Joining me now is Jesse Williams, actor, Oscar-winning producer and activist, and Judith Brown Deannis, executive director of the Advancement Project National Office. Thank you both for being here. Great to see both of you. Um, Judith, I'm going to start with you. The Advancement Project is putting, putting out this video. Tell me why. Or this series, um, well, I should thank say. You, thanks, Joy, for having us. Um, you know, we wanted to do this. Jesse and I really created this because it's a love letter to black people to explain how cops get off. We saw the videos, right? We saw Philando Castile. We know what happened to Breonna Taylor, and we know there was no accountability. So we wanted people to understand that it's the systems, that it's our culture that creates a place where there can be no accountability, where they get to evade accountability. And so this is really about teaching people. We call it kind of the schoolhouse rock of policing. Let me play another clip, um, and this is going to be um, on the institutional protections that police officers enjoy. Take a look. Have you ever wondered how cops are so well protected when they break the law? I mean, cops have a special set of institutions that protect them from any liability for their actions. This includes the prosecutors, police unions, and the police force itself. It all starts with this thing called the blue wall of silence. It's a code of silence that cops live by. A no snitching culture that protects them when they do something wrong or even illegal. Their rule is, see something, keep your mouth shut. And Jesse, you have an audience that ranges from TV to Broadway. I know you've been very politically active, um, but you know, you have a very broad audience. But who is the audience in your mind for this series? Uh, well, thanks again for having us. I, I, it's it's uh, kind of multi-pronged. As, as Judith said, part of this is to let folks know when this happens time and time again, this is not about you. It is not about your value. It is not, do not let this, do not be discouraged that this is a reflection of your value, the life of your, you know, the value of your life. This is about a system that is in place. We want to raise everybody's understanding of what these words mean. When you hear DA, when you hear grand jury, what, is, what do those things mean? So can the rising tide lifts all boats of understanding of what's happening in our system and also to uh, give a sense of history, some historical context in terms of Hollywood's role, all of this stuff is undergirds what we've become accustomed to. And the more you become accustomed to abuse, the more you tolerate it, the more you're likely it doesn't, get or, doesn't make your blood boil anymore. And that's exactly what the system wants. So it's, it's, a, it's overall educational for everybody. Um, but we, what we started to see was that folks were getting really discouraged and felt like this must mean we don't have worth and that that's not acceptable to us. You know what's, what's interesting, Judith, um, you know, to that very point, we've seen you know, police react in some very familiar and not in a good way, uh, ways to the uh, protests that we've seen over the end of Roe versus Wade. And you sort of contrast that kind of policing, which I think you guys are talking about here, which is sort of mm -hmm. unaccountable and sort of brutal to physically, you know, restrain the actions of citizens, right? And then you sort of look at the Uvalde situation where a lot of people thought, well, I thought that's what police did, is rush into the line of fire. But the Supreme Court says they don't have to do that. Um, how do we get past this disconnect between what I would say mostly non-black people, non-people of color think police are supposed to do, what African-Americans, what black folks and brown folks and indigenous folks want police to do, and what legislatively they are required to do? The other thing we're doing, Joy, with the series, How Cops Get Off, is that we are sending people to a website, policefreecommunities.org, because we want people to start reimagining what public safety looks like. Uvalde was not public safety, right? And, and all of these mass shootings are not public safety. And we have to 
thinking about something different than always saying that the police are going to take care of us. We want people to start thinking about what are the root causes of violence? And let's start addressing those things instead of always saying, let's give more money to the police. The police are going to handle it. Uh, because too many of our communities know that that is not true. We do not trust the police. We are scared of the police. And we want people to live in a society where they can feel safe and they can be free at the same time. And so this is the opportunity to learn and think about what are the solutions that will really help our community so that everyone feels safe. Jesse, I think for particularly, you know, Black Lives Matter was formed because people do fear um, the police and feel that police disproportionately brutalize people who are black and brown. Um, and yet what Democrats are doing is giving them more money. Um, the sort of line now is fund the police, give, give more money, more training, more funding. And people are frustrated by that. What do you say to people who are frustrated by the fact that, you know, in their mind, the people they're electing are doing the opposite of what they're asking them to do? Continue to be frustrated and take them to account because this, that's that political theater, that cliche kind of uh, boomeranging support our troops, it's all an extension of this just kind of sloganeering because it's, it's always been a great shield to hide behind. More m law enforcement, military, it sounds like you love America. It sounds like cowboys and horses, and it's, it's a fairy tale stuff. It has nothing to do with what's actually keeping people safe, allowing them to you know, protect themselves and their families. Um, so continue to keep, to keep uh, our feet on the gas, as it were, to, to shine a light as to what, what, why this is really happening. I appreciate uh, both of you doing this uh, important work. Judith, uh, really quickly, where, would, where can people watch these, uh, this series? Sure, they can see them at policefreecommunities.org. And they're also on YouTube. They have their own page, uh, How Cops Get Off. Thank you. All right. Jesse Williams, uh, Judith Brown Deannis, great to see you both. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Stay with us. Who won the week is next. Why choose proven quality sleep from the Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed? Because it can gently raise your.